Hello everyone at Phosphor-G. I'm Robin and I'm going to be talking about jittering. So first thing to say is sorry for not being there. Um, I was in Florence and I even have the t-shirt but I can't be there today for reasons that I'll come on to in a little bit. Um, just by way of background, I'm using this OBS tool to record the video, which is free open source software for making videos and super happy with it so far. And I'm just going to try and um, shrink myself on, uh, on this system if it will allow me. There we go. Okay, so now I'm little and you can see my screen and I'm gonna go on to a much more interesting set of screens. So first up, let's just put this in context. I am presenting um, in this session and I will check the videos after uh, when I get the opportunity. And yeah, really excited to be part of the Phosphor G event. I was at the OSM State of the Map conference before this one and um, yeah unfortunately I can't be there which is the topic of my next slide so yeah I've combined this with a bit of a family holiday so you can see this photo was actually taken today um, just outside Lake Como and that's my partner Katie and our little baby Kit so apologies for not being there in person, but when you see that photo, hopefully that um, helps clarify the situation. And thanks to Marco and the organizers for allowing me to present via video. I really hope to answer any questions, although I don't think it's gonna be possible to have an audio link. I will try, and if not, please get in touch via GitHub or on Twitter or any other way um, that you like. So talking of GitHub and getting in touch, the uh, work that I'm going to present is all fully reproducible. So you can find the code and um, even the slides are available from github.com forward slash Robin Lovelace Fos4G 2022 or actually Fos4G just 22. So it's a bit more concise. Okay, so onto the actual content of what I'm gonna be talking about it's jittering and routing options for converting origin destination data into route networks. This is a bit of a mouthful, but essentially this is about using free and open source software for transport planning applications. And we have developed what I think is quite an exciting new method that can add a huge amount of value to origin destination data, which is probably the number one publicly available file format for representing movement data that's in the public domain. So just for people who don't know, origin destination data represents how many people go from zone A to zone B. And therefore it's good because um, it's a fairly compact file format or, or file structure. Um, it has been used since at least the 1950s so it's very mature and most transport authorities collect data so you can convert your household travel survey into OD data. Also a huge shout out to the collaborators on this project, Rosa Felix and Dustin Carlino. And this is also um, accompanied by a paper that has been um, peer reviewed in the Phosphor-G affiliated um, journal. So moving on, why do we need to do jittering? And I think an image can tell a thousand words, so more or less it's represented by the image that you can see here, which represents a major transport network, and this is for a, a project for um, the Republic of Ireland to generate a strategic cycle network planning tool. And basically jittering is needed for us to get the result that you can see there. And we need that result for to solve very clear and well-known problems, which is the fact that cities are congested. And if you get people to switch out of cars to walking and cycling, 
you can solve, you can help solve the climate crisis, you can certainly help solve the health and obesity crises, and you can um, tackle many other uh, problems at the same time. But you need good evidence on where the cycling and walking potential in order to prioritise your investment. So that's the policy angle. I'm not going to go into that detail. In detail, obviously, this is a technical GIS conference. So I'm going to focus on the application um, and the tech that you can use to do this. So myself and colleagues at the University of Leeds and collaborators in many other places, including the University of Lisbon, where Rosa is based, and the Alan Turing Institute in London, which is where Dustin's based. We've been developing open source reproducible or open source software for reproducible uh, transport planning. A lot of this stuff is actually powered by OSGEO tools. So um, Goodal and Geos drive a lot of this stuff. So I'm not going to talk about those tools because they're already out there and you can find out and, and they're, they're fairly well used. Just a little bit about the kind of starting point and the, the motivation for developing the, this tool. Um, in a way, it's based on a previous project which we've already deployed. So that's represented in the um, maps where you can see this process of converting origin destination data into route networks. So this is an established procedure. Um, we've written about it in a paper back in 2020, but essentially the modeling framework we believe is modular, future-proof, scalable, and it can also output results in terms of vector data and raster data. So just to explain briefly this modeling framework, which is the starting point, you have origin destination data, you represent it as straight lines between zone centroids, so that's why you've got multiple lines going to the same places. Then you convert them into routes, and then you do this process called, uh, I guess, route network aggregation to generate a vector route network, and then optionally, you can convert it into a uh, tile pyramid or vector tiles um, to serve those results, which is actually what we did um, in the result that I presented earlier. So that's the modeling framework. And what is jittering? Well, essentially, let's just focus in on this, that jittering is aiming to overcome the limitations of this implementation of the framework, which is simply that you it results in quite sparse networks. So you can see that there are quite big gaps in the network and maybe for a driving network this doesn't matter so much but for walking and cycling all of the evidence suggests that you need a really dense network and we we've picked up on the fact over various years that it's not actually an efficient uh, an efficient use of computational resources to only assume that trips start at the centroid that's just simply unrealistic so jittering is a way to overcome, to, to, to get around this. And the word jittering already, already exists in data visualization. It means adding random noise to a data set for uh, visualization purposes. So to avoid, uh, if you've got a scatter plot, all of the points going on top of each other, meaning you cannot see what's going on, um, you add a slight random movement to it so you can actually see the full extent of the data. And it's exactly the same process um, applied to origin destination data. So we've written a paper, it's published in Transport Findings, and you can check it out. So th this, this presentation is starting at, at that starting point. We've got it, but it's trying to work out how you can use this to get the best possible route network for your transport planning applications. And I've just got a very brief visual demo of how this works. These are, this is a reproducible example um, that you can find if you look up the original jittering paper. But essentially, this is a minimal example with three um, OD pairs. This is actually a good example of how origin destination data looks. It's really simple, it's just a square table. Um, but it only becomes geographically meaningful when you link it with 
the zones and you can see these zone codes um, link to zone codes to, to the zones here and the zones are typically the same for the origins and the destinations but they don't have to be and what jittering does is it simply moves the start and end point so um, B here represents just taking a completely random point in space and fixing that as the start and the end point so you've got the same movement but the lengths of the, the lines and, and their locations have, have changed. One adaptation, which um, we, we always recommend this now, is to assign subpoints. And those subpoints can be on the transport network or you can have different types of subpoints. Um, for example, if you're uh, routing to a particular type of destination, like shops, the subpoints could be shops. So that's the next. Um, thing that we did in jittering and then the final thing is actually disaggregation so we're splitting a single um, OD pair into multiple OD pairs so for example this uh, blue line um, it contains 100 to 200 trips we've just split it into uh, four pieces with a disaggregation threshold um, preventing any one of these desire lines having more than um, trips in that particular threshold. So it's fairly technical, but in a way it's a very um, flexible and I think powerful approach. And you can see the jittering, um, yeah, you can see the jittering technique here in operation on, um, this is data from Edinburgh, so it, but it would work in any city. So it gives you a much more diverse um, end product. And what you can see here is that, yes, as expected, it generates more um, realistic uh, route networks, or they seem to be more realistic, they're certainly more diverse. But what we didn't do in that original paper was to validate how good the network is. Hence, we tried some validation. So at the uh, JISRUC 2022 conference, we presented on jittering and how it compared with real world data for um, a data set in Edinburgh. We used a slightly larger data set than what we presented in the original paper where we just presented the methods. And um, we changed the jittering parameters and lo and behold, we found that there was an increase, it, there was an improvement in the, the model uh, fit with the observed level of movement as you increase, uh, as you did jittering and as you um, set this disaggregation threshold. So this was only a very small test of it, but it kind of was a bit of a proof of concept. If you actually look at the R squared values, they're extremely low. So um, what we've got is an improvement in R squared, but basically from extremely low to very low. So it works, but what we need to remember is that this example only used a tiny fraction of the available um, origin destination data. It's not a very big training data set where we only had a, a handful of points. And so we, we couldn't really um, draw that strong conclusions from that, that work. Um, another major limitation of what we presented at the JISRUC conference is that we only considered one type of routing. So that is a big limitation because if you imagine using a slightly different routing algorithm, you might get an entirely different result. So what we discovered or what we, what we realized is that maybe we should try um, changing both the routing um, options and also changing the jittering in the same process to see if we can improve the fit. And um, enter Lisbon. So Rosa, who's based at the University of Lisbon, has fantastic data represented in the map below. And there's also been some new cycle infrastructure in Lisbon. So it's a very interesting case study uh, from that perspective. So let's um, move forward quickly to see the result. So essentially, as you can see, um, yes, you get very different results, both by changing the jittering parameters and by changing the root network parameters. The image on the right hand side 
it's obviously much better fit to the count points. It's picking up this quite important route here than uh, this one on the left. So we've got different jittering parameters and different routing ones. And I'm not gonna go through all of the results. You can read them in the paper, but the headline is that by doing both jittering and disaggregation and by um, carefully selecting, by, by testing a range of routing um, options, you will get the, the best fit. And what's interesting is these R squared values are much, much better than what we got from the data set in Edinburgh. So you can see here, this is the, the winner. Um, it's got a disaggregation threshold of 500. So that's actually pretty high. And that plus jittering gets you um, the best result. You can do more routing. So when you reduce the disaggregation threshold, you dramatically increase the number of uh, lines, the, the number of routes that you're going to calculate to almost 2,000. But um, this shows that there's a trade-off there. Like it does start to level off beyond a certain point additional disaggregation doesn't get you uh, better results and in fact it's more important to try a range of different uh, routing services so you can see we tried google we tried this um, level of traffic stress algorithm from the r5 routing engine we also tried um, cypress streets um, routing options and um, yeah it was just really interesting to see that this um, choice of routing parameters are in fact more important beyond a certain uh, threshold than um, extra disaggregation. So that's it guys, I mean there's not really much else to say, it was extremely fun uh, working on this project especially taking data from another um, international city, capital of, of Portugal um, and this is going to feed into um, evidence-based decision-making both in Portugal and in other places. So the map that I presented um, right at the beginning, we, we're going to put that into production and that will help planners in Ireland um, prioritise their investment where it will be most effective. There's a lot of next steps here. I mean, there's a lot going on. So there's actually quite a big parameter space and in this paper we've only kind of tweaked a few of the available uh, parameters. So I think the next stage is to kind of scale this up, find more um, and bigger input data sets. So there's a range of possible data sets that we could use here. And I'm not going to read each of them out because uh, time is of the essence. You can certainly find the slides online um, and I will link to those um, from the GitHub repository and also put them out on Twitter. So yeah, um, I really hope that's that's been of interest. If anyone is interested in running some code, you can run this, um, the, the Rust implementation can be called from the command line. Um, so, and you can also run it as an R implementation. So um, there's a rather extended abstract, which I'm not going to go into, but um, yeah, thanks a lot for listening. As I say, apologies for not being there in person, and I really hope that you enjoyed my talk, and yeah, look forward to any questions um, online. So thanks a lot, have a great Phosphor G guys, and yeah, see you at the next one. Bye for now.